Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I'm here today to give you some tips on how to update your ANET ET5X. So let's get cracking. Friends, I'm going to try and make this super quick, but I do want to remind you, Flash and firmware is always at your own risk. I don't really believe it solves anything, but it does give you options of things you can adjust on your printer that ANET didn't give us. Friends, before we go too far, I do want to remind you, you do need an ST-Link version 2 or similar so that you can get that firmware to the printer. So first things first, you want to be able to back up your old firmware. I've got a video that shows you how to do that with the ET4X. Friends, I'm going to put that link in here. Just watch that again back up your firmware before you start. So before we go any further, let me show you where you can find ANET firmware. Once again, this is my website, 3D Printers tab. This is my ANET section. As you can see here, we've got notes about the firmware. Once again, it's your responsibility when you start playing with these. So there are firmware links. If we click site one, these are the newest. You'll see some actually go to 2022, but there is no ET5X even on page two. If we go back to my website though, there is site two. If you go to site two, you can get to version one of the ET5X firmware. Remember, if you need this, it is right here. You can right click and you can click download so you have a copy of the firmware if you ever have to get back to it. I've got a folder where I store all this stuff. This is my ET5X and I'm gonna hit save. Now, if you were looking, there's one in there that said original ET5X. That was what I downloaded from the machine just so I also had a backup copy. Once again, the steps to do that are in a second video. I'll make sure there is a link in the cards. Friends, it's time to build our new firmware. We're going to do that with Visual Studio Code. I'm going to launch it first because it almost always has updates. As you can see, I had a prior project. I'm going to click File and I'm going to choose Close Folder so that project's gone. And I'm just going to let it do its updates while we track down Marlin. To snag our version of Marlin, I'm going to return to my website, once again hit 3D printers, and then right here is a link to find the Marlin GitHub. Now when you get here, I like to start at Marlin, and then I want to choose Bug Fix 2.1. That's what I like to build with. As soon as you get there, you can click Code, and you can hit Download Zip. I'm going to save mine in my Downloads folder, and I'm going to simply hit Save. Now make sure you don't skip this step. We need to go back to the Marlin Firmware tab. We need to scroll down and we need to find the correct configurations. Now start by switching to Bug Fix 2.1. Don't skip that either. These things are all so important. Make sure you stay with me, watch to the end. I'm also gonna remind you there's a configuration you have to do or you're not gonna be happy with your touch screen. Stay with me, I promise this stuff all matters. Once again, we're going to hit save. You can see I've already done this before. That's why there's a version 2. Once you get it saved, though, we can move on to the next step. Super simple, friends. Right click and extract all. I want to delete this extra label. So I'm going to just have it say downloads. Hit extract and then wait for it to finish. There you can see my Marlin bug fix folders there. I'm also going to extract the configurations. I'm going to do something different though. I'm going to do show more options. Friends, I love 7-zip and I'm once again going to do extract here. It already has these configurations. I'm just going to tell it yes to all because these will update over the ones that were there. Next step is we need to find those configurations. Mine are right here, bug fix 2.1. You can see here's one where I made a mistake a long time ago. Inside this config, we need to double click and we need to find examples and we need to find our printer. We are using the ANET ET5X. Find your configuration files, right click and copy them. Then you can switch to finding where your Marlin is. Notice I can use this little drop down arrow to find bug fix 2.1 double click on the Marlin. These are the original two, so I'm going to hit delete, and then I can simply right click and paste those configurations in. Friends, right there is the step that makes it so that Marlin is ready to work with your ANET ET5X. So here we go. We are in Visual Studio Code. You need to make sure you have Platform I.O., which is an extension. If you have not done that, you need to. You also need Auto Build Marlin. That's what makes this process so darn magical. I'm going to do File, and I'm going to choose Open Folder. 
I'm going to browse in my downloads, and then I want Marlin Bug Fix 2.1. Remember, stop right here. Do not go in the next folder. Just hit Select Folder, and then once again, give it time to build all its little pieces and parts and get ready. Make sure you let it build, double check, and rebuild before you go to the next step where you actually use Auto Build Marlin. So right now I'm going to go into the Marlin folder and I'm going to find those two configuration files. I'm not going to look at advanced, but I am going to look at regular configuration. When you click on it, you can see it pops up here. This is where you can double check to make sure you had the right one. So you can see I do have the ET5X. And then the only thing I'm going to change is down here. So if you scroll down just a little ways, you'll see where it says custom machine name. So I'm going to call this HLMT for HL Mod Tech ET5X. Now I've already made this once, so I'm going to put a little V2 after it. That way when we're all done, you'll be able to tell that the V2 has been added. If you had customized your ET5X, this is where you would mess with that. I don't mess with my printer, so I am just going to back up and I'm going to show you how Auto Build Marlin works. So friends, we have got two options. We can do the no bootloader, which is the way it came to us, or we could do the open bootloader. Now today I'm going to do the no bootloader version because it's what I've already tested. If you had the open BLT one, you'd be able to put your next update on an SD card and send it that way. But I'm going to start here because I know this works. Friends, all we have to do is hit build and let it do its thing. Now do be patient. If your Visual Studio Code says it needs to reboot, make sure you reboot it before you get to this point. As you can see, tools get downloaded, unpacked, added. This depends on your computer, how long it's gonna take. If you've already run this once, well then the tools will already be there and that'll always make it a little bit faster. But you do have to plan on this taking a little bit of time. The first time I ran this on one of my computers, I was using Wi-Fi. It took about six minutes for all the little pieces to be added so that it was ready to send to the printer. And friends, there you have it. When it's done, it pops up the bin and the elf. You could use these with the manual system that I showed you in that other video, but friends, are you ready for this? We can actually upload it right from Visual Studio Code. Let me show you how to make it happen. Friends, it is time to get inside the ET5X from the bottom. You'll need to take out a bunch of these screws with a small Allen wrench. You'll need a larger Allen wrench, of course, to remove the legs. Do make sure you store all your parts so it's easy to put it back together. One little note, you can see I've got this balancing on a piece of 2x4. That actually works pretty slick so that you can get access to those screws. And it seems to keep it pretty solid as well. Alright friends, the rest of this is possible because of the ST-Link version 2. Friends, we are going to use three prints, two, four, and six, SW clock, SW DIO, and ground. Now friends, sometimes these are labeled different, so make sure you double check. As I showed you a moment, we're using two, four, and six. So you can see I'm on the other side with two, four, and six. You can see I've got mine with the black one as ground, the brown one, is the SWDIO and the white one is the SW clock. Make sure you've got those double checked or you will not have success. Quick pause friends, I just want to remind you that right now the 3D printer is unplugged. Never reach inside your machine while it's plugged in. Alright friends, so in the ET5X we need to find this motherboard and see right there that is the G and then these get connected in this order black, white, brown. Of course the ground is the bottom one then we connect the white and then finally the third one is the brown one get my fat hand out of the way and once again double checking from the G black white brown is the order alrighty friends so right now I am going to plug in and I'm gonna power on the ET5X and now I've got an extension so my PC can reach and we simply plug it in so with all that connected, all that is left is for us to simply reach up in here and click the upload button. So I used to show the screen while this was happening, but there is not a darn thing that shows up. 
I'm going to quickly speed the video up so that you can see what it looks like when it finishes. And there's what our final screen looks like. Time to flip it over, plug it in, and power it on. All right, I have flipped it over so you can see this better. Let's do that first power on. That's how you can tell that you have Marlin 2.1 bug fix. And right there, friends, you've got the V2 from when I updated it. We have got an issue where the touch screen is not functioning quite like it's supposed to. I have got a way to fix it, and it's going to involve using Kira. Before we can start, friends, you do need to close Visual Studio Code. These things will not work together. And then as soon as you've got that done, you need to launch Kira. I'm using Kira 5.21. Whatever Kira you have will be fine. You do need to make sure that you have your ET5X added as a printer already. Once added and connected via USB, we need to move over to the monitor button. We're going to use the sweet send G code. Code we're going to send is M995 and press enter. That puts us in the calibration mode. I like to use an Allen wrench. You can see I'm just going to tap, 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 and tap. Calibration failed. If that happens, just do it again. 995 and press enter. Bingo, calibration completed, and now we're ready to roll. All right, friends, so there you have it. Steps in just about 10 minutes to get your ANET ET5X to the latest version of Marlin. Friends, I want to send a shout out to all the developers of the Marlin GitHub. Oh my gosh, you guys have made this process so slick over the years. That auto build Marlin is insane. Friends, I also want to send a shout out to a viewer, Tom. He started this whole process in motion when he was asking me if we could get paused at Lair Height to work with the ANET ET5X. Friends, make sure you stay tuned because, of course, we'll keep exploring. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.